Curling now enters the Sports Weekend Spotlight. Well, they wanted it live, and so we're going to do it live, and nothing gives me more joy than this. All of this and seeing you, Colleen. It's so good to see you, and it's so good to be live. So thank you to the fans who really said, you know what? We like it wild and free, so let's give them wild and free. Uh, a kitchen party, because you're in the kitchen, call. I am in the kitchen. I'm in my sister's kitchen, which is pretty awesome. We've re re recreated it. Got whiteboards. We've got a curling rock. It's all you need. And what a weekend of curling it was. We have a lot to talk about. A jam-packed show, if you would have seen on the social medias today. JJ, Jennifer Jones is leading off the show. Benny Hebes, call we always love to hear from Ben Hebert. Um, they We've got Lori St. George and Felix Esselin. Sorry, I cut you off. What were you saying? They both had great weekends is all I'm saying. And, and nice to see uh, Felix and Lori wind up on the podium bronze. They had dominated all week. Absolutely. And then we'll talk to Laura Walker, who's now part of the Board of Governors with Curling Canada. I, I felt like we might have to go through a player agent or a, a PR agent to get to her now. I feel like we need to curtsy for, but you know, the big hope for Laura Walker on that board is an athlete's voice. So we're going to see what kind of input because she has a strong voice and a lot of passion. So hopefully it leads to some more constructive change going forward. For the Beautiful. Beautiful. And then we're going to close out the show with some Hall of Famers. The Furby Four inducted into the Hall of Fame and call no stories yet, but we'll let you tell some stories from the road because when they were doing all their winning, you were doing all uh, your winning. So it's always great when curlers get into the Hall of Fame. Devin, if you think I'm going to spill stories on the road, you do not know me. They're going to the grave. Okay. They go to the grave, baby. My you you will share us a story. So uh, Hall of Famers, we love when curlers are in the Hall of Fame. I'm And listen to this. This is a great segue to JJ, Jennifer Jones. Let's bring her in right now because uh, what Randy Furby, hi, JJ. What hi. Randy, what Randy Furby revealed at the Hall of Fame ceremony is it was you who nominated them. Tell me about that. Well, they're just, they totally deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. They're, I mean, they're the Furby Four. They, they did so many incredible things in curling, one of the best teams to ever play, and the fact that they weren't in there. And obviously, I know them quite well. I grew up with Dave, and Brandy and I have done some work together. And we were traveling, and I found out that they weren't in the Hall of Fame. And I'm like, I have to change that. Yeah. So uh, put through the nomination. I was thrilled to see that they they got they they were awarded the the nomination and I really really I actually was looking at driving from Niagara to Ottawa so I could be at the ceremony and it was six and a half hours of driving there and then six and a half hours back and I really wanted to go and I just I'm like I just couldn't figure out how to make it work so I was there in spirit and I wish I could have been there to celebrate with them well done that's nice to hear that you nominated them hard to believe you didn't have the energy for the drive because I'm looking at you going oh, I <laughs> energize your bunny queen you know <laughs> Six doubles to broadcasting when you're not playing and then playing in a championship grand slam final. How do you have that energy? Because back in the day when I used to broadcast and curl, I only broadcasted after curling was done. So how honestly, like I don't know. I've just it's my nature. I I just never get really get tired. Like when I say I'm tired, like I'm You're toast. I'm tired, <laughs> yeah. I I find the broadcasting actually kind of energizing. Curling to me is doing what I love to do. So it's never really an energy sucker. I just, I just, I find it almost energizes me like being on the ice. It's just, it's kind of where I love to be. And my family was able to come to Niagara Falls, which always helps. And so I just, you know what? And I was like this close to going and Brent's like, you're crazy, Jennifer. You can't drive six and a half hours, get there at midnight and then Go to the ceremony to go to the induction um and then come back and be back for your 7 30 game that night like it just was and sometimes i just agree to do things and don't really think about the ramifications of everything but yeah i don't know and that's why i think i've curled for so long i, I curling is what i feel keeps me young and just gives me life and energy so i love it and okay. that's right what can i say yeah. 
And, awesome. and, and, and winning helps with that too, keeping you going. So congratulations, Jennifer, your 10th slam title first with the new team. I think we have some highlights of a superb shot. If we can roll this to score three, you made it look easy. It wasn't the easiest shot in the world, but congratulations, Jay. Just tell us as we watch these highlights, what it means to you and the team, because it was a beautiful celebration at the end of it all as well. Yeah, it was. I mean, this was a pretty fortunate, we got, pretty fortunate to have this opportunity for three and it really did change the momentum of the game um, just to score the three and get up early in the game but it, it means the world to me the girls are just so great and it was their first slam final it's the first time like we played in some quarters last year and never made it past and then to I don't know like to go out there and like we we pulled Tiranzoni in the quarters and we they beat us a couple times in the quarters last year and then Hasselberg and they're playing so well and then play Caitlin in the final. We had to play some really great teams and the girls just played great and they were so excited. They were oh, so excited and like I was so excited. It was just a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, your money, Jennifer, in big credit, <laughs> let's face it. So what did I, I was surprised it has been you have no droughts except one drought was the Grand Slam. So what was it like the kind of finally, as you say, the fields is so tough when you just mentioned Terrazzoni, Hasselberg, and then Caitlin. But but what was it like to be back winning another slam after a bit of a drought? It, it felt great. Like, these are some of the toughest events to win because they're just filled with the best teams in the world. And, yeah, it felt, it, it felt really good. We'd worked really hard and just looking like they were so happy. Like, it just made me feel so great. And... Yeah, like it for me, it was just nice to have another one and to win one. And we've lost a couple of kind of big games along the way in the slams and it just didn't work out. But uh, to go and win one. Yeah. And I don't think I've ever won this one. So it's kind of exciting. Nice. Uh, Yay. Jennifer, uh, myself and a lot of people on social media were making a lot of you going up against Caitlin Laws and all the winning and all the memories you would have. Um, I think this was your, I believe this was your fifth meeting. It, you were tied going into this. So you, you're now ahead. But but what's it like? Are you, can you just sort of put that all aside and, and focus on this just being another game? Or is does something come up when you think about all those memories you would have shared together? I think in the moment of the game, like it's totally just the game. Like you're always just playing the other color rocks. I don't know if you were like that, Colleen. Like you just look at the, you're looking at the rocks and you're trying to figure out how to get more of your rocks in the rings than the other color. I, I think it's just different at the end of the game. You know, you're used to celebrating together and obviously it's just, you're playing against them. So it's, that part's a little bit different, but for the most part, it's good. And we have so many great memories and, you know, I wish them nothing but the best. And it's kind of, it's nice that we were both in that, in the opportunity to play in the final. Nice. Yeah, commitment to the five person team this year and now going with the four person team, except for maybe when you're playing mixed doubles. Why was that adjustment so necessary? Why did you see either in the game that needed either consistency or, uh, you know, commitment that you had to know exactly what that person was throwing all you know, for us, it was just, um, you know, when Mackenzie elected to step away, it was just going forward. It The rules don't really favor a five-person team, to be honest. There's some rules that are pretty detrimental to having five people. So it just seemed to make sense to just continue with a four-person team and then have a spare. And so that's what we decided to do. And Chelsea's uh, carries helping us out in a couple of events. And um yeah, and that that's the only reason. I really do believe it's a it's a good thing, but it just the rules aren't quite there yet. Does not favor? Uh you were talking about having fun and the smiles on the ice, Jim. We have another photo uh of, <laughs> of you all nice. fun outside of that. So you you, you know so many memories on the ice. We hear from Curlos all the time, but these are the things and the experiences. And there's Glenn. Wonderful to see him as well um, outside of the rink that you're also able to experience. Yeah. And they're just fabulous girls. I mean, Carly and Lauren being from the Maritimes, they just have this hospitable nature about them and their smiles are infectious and their energy and I remember when I was their age, Jill and I would always go early um, to every single event we played in Europe. And we used to go to Europe a lot more. So we pretty much traveled Europe together. And those are the things that I remember a lot about curling. And Jill and I did that. And so I tell them, like, you should do it. I, You know, it's harder for me. I'm at a dis different stage. I've got a family and other kind of responsibilities. But it's fun when we can go and, like, have some laughs together, have a couple of drinks or just share stories and 
I never really feel older than them until we celebrate birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I can maybe reverse mine and no, it does still doesn't work. <laughs> How's the adjustment going to this new technique and are you what how much of it are you adapting with this change in the delivery philosophy? I mean your your delivery's money, there's nothing to change there, but making sure everybody's coming on the same line. I know this is a little maybe too technical talk, but how's that going? The adjustment when you've got four great curlers to go, hey, let's even try to ramp it up a little bit more. Well, it's it's going great and Honestly, it's kind of how I've always believed this curling stone should be thrown. So it hasn't been that big of an adjustment. The girls made some adjustments last year and um, obviously we've been fine tuning, but it's just been, it's been really good and kind of confirming what we've already thought and, and um, just working really hard at it. The girls work hard. I work hard. And I find that like, if you ask me what the most important part of curling is, I always say technical and technical excellence. And so it's um, to me, it's fun. I know that sounds like I'm a curling geek, eh? Technical well, you both work are. is fun. You both are. And anytime I yeah. get you both together, it's why we're all still keeping up with the Jones. Yeah. So. <laughs> Good, luck. Good luck keeping up with Joneses. All right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, that, yeah, congrats, Jim. Beautiful Thank always you. to see you in the winner's circle and, and having so much fun and, and continuing to inspire others. So thank you for making the time. It yeah. was fun and it was really special because Skyla was there and she doesn't remember much before because it was COVID. And so she gets to remember one. We got a trophy pick. So that meant the world to me. It's great to have the kids involved. So thanks, guys. Appreciate yeah. it. See you in Nova Scotia. You got it. <laughs> thanks, Jen. Awesome. Yeah. And Picto, of course. So, And then, of course, the world. So we've said this before, Cape Breton. So. It's going to be a party. Party. Keep party. Uh, all right, let's get into it. Uh, Benny Hebes up next. He was also playing in the slam final. What a trip this team had to Ontario. Uh, this might be a good time call to talk about the world rankings because uh, you have a whiteboard. <laughs> and look at, at the top of the men's world. Can we bring mm -hmm. Benny Hebes in as he gives us a breakdown? Benny, on top of the world. Not bad. They have climbed. Nice. Good weekend, Ben. Yeah, we had uh, we had two good weeks. I mean, yeah. I've had a lot of success in Ontario. Whenever we go out there, we seem to get whooped no matter who we play. Me and Mark were laughing. We never used to win out there when we were with Martin and kind of kept the trait going with Cooey, but Botcher doesn't care about those old those old pass. So he played uh, he played really good. It was a good win in Dundas and we were kind of up and down at the slam, but we heated up at the right time, played a really good playoff round. And, you know, we actually played pretty good in the final, not terrible, a few misses here and there. But Retorn has played well, made a really good shot uh, in the first end there when we had him in jail. And after that, he kind of rode the momentum. But, you know, we're certainly pleased. Um, you know, that name looks really nice at the top of the board. That was one of our goals as a team when we put it together. And, you know, we've had since January, you know, we won that slam in Camrose and then we won the slam in Regina. You know, our record at the slams the last three has been, uh, you know, pretty tasty. So we're, we're trending the right direction. We still got a lot of work to do, but uh, I like seeing that name close to the top. How much better can you guys get? Because that looked pretty. I know you didn't win the, that game, uh, but you look so perfect. And the sweeping blows my mind that you two have even taken it to this next. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of good sweeping teams, I think, as you saw there. Um, you know the big the big boys from Italy. They're tough. I can't uh, I can't be six six unfortunately. So I'm I'm working with five eleven here. That's the best I got. But uh, yeah, this is a great shot here. You know Brett uh, he laid down a big scrub here and, and botched through a beauty. But um, that was a tough game. We've had we've had some battles against these guys. You know a lot of respect for them. They're a really good team. You know, I actually like playing them. Like we, I think we've played them four times and every time it's been like extra end draw to the button to win so yeah you know, really exciting to play those games those are the games i actually really enjoy playing and you know we we're obviously we wanted to win and we we left a few shots out there i know even personally myself i could have made a few better freezes there and set the boys up and i know brett probably wants a couple back but botch played great and you know i'm, I'm looking forward to see what he can do the next couple of years he's coming into his own as a skip he's been really impressive this year so far Beautiful and a great shot here by Returnes making a double. That's a tough shot. I thought yeah. he would have thrown the the draw, Benny, but he, he played the double. Okay, I want to set this up and I want you to know where it's coming from with full respect. But it's a conversation curling fans have, and I I need 
your advice on this. Oh, boy. I'm looking at the scoreboard, and you've got one in the eighth end. And you see the conversations about these low-scoring battles. Walk me through the strategy around uh, scoreboard management, um, controlling the game, because Colleen and I have bantered about this over the weekend and into today. If you win the game, it doesn't matter how you get there. But do, do you like winning 3-2, 2-1, or do you want to be... We talk about hammer efficiency. Can you walk me through all of that? Because some people say boring, and yet there's brilliant shots made during a game. But wrap it up in like two minutes, not an hour. Okay, go ahead. Well, it's really not that long of a conversation. I mean, the first end, we didn't have the hammer. They're a tough team to flip the brick against, right? Whenever you have the hammer, you're in total control of the game. So I don't mind being tied up, coming home with the hammer any game against the top teams. I know we joke, like, you know, we're at the top of the – top of the world ranking right now what do they say it's lonely at the top it ain't very lonely up there because everybody's right on your tail right right you know so i mean you're looking at a dean moet return as gushu like who else is up there i mean there's so many teams that could be number one week to week you know we're pretty pretty lucky we've been on a bit of a hot stretch to be able to claim that for now but i don't care how you win and i mean i yeah, do i want to win seven six or two one i really don't care no one really remembers the score of the game but if you watch that game I know people say we like to play defensive. We have the hammer. We're controlling the game. If you miss one, we're going to take a deuce, and then good luck coming back. You know, we got we got a good little good way to manage our game. Brendan likes his game plan, and and we kind of stick with him. But, I mean, it wasn't like we were intentionally having one point going into the eighth. Like, those guys made a lot of doubles. Yeah. You know, like we had some rocks in play. The first end, he was drawn against three buried. Could have been three nothing. And then you guys would have talked about how offensive we are and how deadly we are. So, I mean, uh, those teams, the other teams are allowed to make a lot of shots, and – you look at teams like Gushu, Moet, Dunstone, and Dean, they're not tough to score against. They can all throw bombs. And you kind of – doesn't matter who you play even at this level. You have to um, – you got to take advantage of your opportunities. And if you play at this level, you sometimes get one chance. And if you're really, really lucky in a game, you get two. Mm. And, you know, we got – we had a chance in the first, and he made a beauty. We had a chance in eight. And he made it – if he doesn't make his last one in eight, guys, we draw for three for the win. So – you know, he made a beauty. Brendan still made a good shot for two. I mean, 4-3 in an 8 end game, there was only a couple blanks. It was a really well-played game. They didn't give us a lot, and we kind of took what they gave us. They started the game with Hammer due to their better round robin, and and that's the way it goes. Um, you know, we've won a lot of games like that, and if you're going to play a little defensive style, you're going to lose some close games too, but I'm comfortable with it. And you know what? Turn that whiteboard around again. What does it say? It looks like it's been working. So how about them apples? That – that – Huh. That is fantastic. And and again, you you know, I mean that all respectively. That was more for yeah. some of the buzz out there than me. But I had to ask, and that's brilliant content. It, it was for Devin's mom, okay? She, it's good. It's good. But, Stop, don't throw my mom in. No, I'm not, I'm but tell me about the, the you guys, have, you, you're, you look so calm. I've never seen Ben more calm in my life. Everything... You're, you're on the Zen. Ben is Zen. I'm saying it here, right? How has this philosophy come together? Or is it just, you're so, everybody's so calm, so focused. There's no panic. There's no, there's no fear. How, how's, tell I me. I mean, uh, we have a good thing going with our team. You know, it starts with, you know, Brendan and his great leadership. And, you know, we've had a lot of talks off and on the ice and with Paul Webster, you know, guiding us. Mm -hmm. We have a plan and we're comfortable with our plan. And all the work we do behind the scenes is kind of, then you get to see the product on the ice. It's not by fluke that we're out there doing things a certain way. You know, we, we're trying to get to something that we want to get to and, and we know the way to get there. I mean, last year was new for us. Maybe we didn't have the, you know, the perfect chemistry yet of, you know, how to, how to me interact with Brett and, you know, me and Mark getting back together in a new skip with three new guys. And so well, we're starting to find our way and kind of what brings the best out of each other. And, you know, I think we're all pretty comfortable with the work we're doing off the ice and how much each other, how much we care and our goals together that are all aligned and freeze you up out there just to have some fun and make some shots. You know, everyone's comfortable with their role. Everyone knows they're working hard. And if someone misses, you know what, they're going to get a pat on the ass. There's not going to be any finger pointing and, and everyone's working hard. So we're happy with that. And it's been going great. And I think big things to come. How do you like them apples? Um, uh, real quickly, Benny, uh, we were talking earlier. You said you were, are you at the curling rink right yeah, now? I'm in the Okotoks curling club ice makers room. <laughs> How's my backdrop? Is it sick? Good. 
It looks like you're in the locker room of an ice maker, yeah. Ben. Well, my kids, my <laughs> kids are doing the junior curling program here at Okotok, oh, so I'm uh, just doing that here tonight. Oh, mini Bens, um, Ben. Just for junior curlers, what is the advice? Because you seem to have taken your stroke speed and poundage on the broom to the next level. Is it just time in the gym? Is it measuring it? Is it? I mean. Do you see your sweeping has improved? You've always been a great sweeper, but man, you were bending that brush and moving it <laughs> fast. You know, I don't, I mean, it's any, it's like anything else. It's such a boring cliche answer, but it's just reps. It's really just repetitions and working hard. I mean, the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. You know, I coach a, a ball team here in Calgary and they're like, why do you teach us the same stuff over and over? I'm like, cause that's how you're going to get good. You don't teach something cause it's the wrong way. You teach it cause it's the right way hmm. and you try to master it. And the more you do it, I mean, curling, it doesn't matter if it's sweeping or throwing rocks or anything, Colleen. It's the best when you find three other players that are on your team that you enjoy and they're your friends and you go to the rink and you have fun. As long as you're enjoying it and having fun, you're going to get good. You're going to want to go to the rink. You're going to make it enjoyable. I used to go to the rink with my my cousins when we were young to sweep, uh, throw a million rocks, have some French fries, and we never wanted to leave, right? It was just fun. If you find three people that want to do it, you're going to find the energy to find the reps, and then all of a sudden you're going to find yourself one day, holy smokes, I'm in the Saskatchewan Junior Final. How did I get here? Oh my God, Pat Simmons called. Oh my God, Kevin Martin called. And now I'm on your show. I mean, I don't, I don't have the recipe of the perfect uh, road of how to get there. It just kind of, just kind of happens. A lot of good teammates, a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. Still, it's been great to me. I believe really? it's French fries, but I don't know. I think you're meditating 24 hours a day because you are, <laughs> you are just. I'm maturing. I am old. I'm getting older out there. Eh? I got to mature at some point. No, you don't. No. Uh, listen, forget Bend It Like Beckham, Bend It Like Ben. Brilliant oh. stuff. Uh, Benny, appreciate you all the time. We'll let you get back out there uh, and always appreciate you. I thought you'd, I thought you'd say something about the tie cats. No, I've ignored that the, the entire time. I'm, I'm, <laughs> that's because of Bo. Come on. We know you and Bo are tight. I went to a game last week. I'm just saying they got a better vibe than Sasky these days. It's unfortunate. Well, listen, that could be a whole other segment, but they've canned the coach. They've canned the head coach. Change is coming. I'm devastated over the season, man. Tough, tough look, but I'm calling it. Ticats win the Great Cup. You heard it here first. What? Watch number one in the world. Careful, people. I hear the footprints coming. Hey, that could switch week over week. I just want to be there at the end of the year. That's when I really want to be there. Brilliant. Okay, Oski Wee Wee. Thanks, See Ben. You See you later. Bye. Oh, we're Oski Wee Oski Wee Wee people now. Right, Oski Wawa. Mm. Um, okay, let's keep it moving. We we we're going to try and keep it to thirty minutes. We on. are. <laughs> we're not. Uh, let's go to the World Mixed uh, Championships now, where Canada has claimed a bronze medal, thanks in large part to the efforts of Felix Aslan and Laurie St. George, who join us fresh from Scotland and on to the show and in different places. Congratulations to you both. Different uh, places. Hi, you guys. Congrats. Thank you. Hey, guys. Wonderful to see you, Felix. Uh, tell me what it was like uh, wearing the maple leaf on the big stage, rolling along, bringing home a medal. Uh, try and find the words to describe uh, what it was like for you. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely a dream come true. I mean, we've we've all went to national championships several times already. And I mean, you always want to represent your province, but you also, you know, have that other goal of representing your country at one point. And we got that opportunity last week to be in Aberdeen and, you know, where the Maple Leafs and, we were stoked to be there. We we had won a long time ago, so it was like a, a long road to the world championship. But uh, we were so happy to be there, and we played well, and it was just a great opportunity for us. Laurie, what was it like for you? And as you are kind of pounding at the door on the women's game, what was your takeaway about kind of facing the pressure of a world championship? Um, you know, I crave pressure. So that was really nice uh, and a really nice experience to live, uh, especially because we had family there too and friends. Uh, so we could feel the whole support of the country. Everyone was applauding when we got off the ice at every game. So it just felt incredible. And we could feel the support also uh, online uh, with all the comments and everything. It was just uh, 
amazing, but to wear the maple leaf and to wear the uh, the Canada jacket was just uh, amazing. It was such an amazing experience. Uh, tell us about that that bronze medal game because uh, we've talked on this show a lot. You know, you're gutted that you lose a semi. You have to refocus yourself to go in there and also know a medal's at stake, and you steal the victory. Um, so tell me about uh, about those closing ends and and what it was like to steal the victory, steal the bronze. We love stealing the bronze from Norway, Felix. Yeah, I mean, like you said, it was a really big disappointment for us. We were obviously aiming for nothing else than the gold medal game. So, uh, I mean, I it was all our first world championship. You never know when you're going to get one more of those moments. You you might never. Um, you know, you got to cherish them as hard as possible. And we told ourselves right after the game that, you know, it wasn't from a lack of effort. It wasn't from bad play either. Like, we played well in that semi. <coughs> You know, like maybe people could even say that we we deserve to win that game. I mean, it was a close one, so it's always a little detail here and there. Mm. But we walked off that semifinal game, and we really wanted to walk back home and you know just say that we've got a medal. So we we went all out on that five that that, that bronze medal game, and we really tried hard to get that. And mm. we probably you know like the emotions were different and it was a really weird game to play regardless but we wanted to do it for ourselves and we wanted to have a medal at a world championship and say that you know at the end when you're when you get old and you can tell people that you've made a medal at a world championship it's just cool so yeah we we gave it our best yeah and felix i am old and i have played in those world bronze medal games and when you can find the guts just, it's harder to play. It's so, it's so meaningful. So I'm here to tell you when you're old, you'll appreciate it. Uh, next up is Halifax for, I think both, you're both coming to the Stu Cells and you, Lori, you're coming down? Yeah, we are coming. Actually, we have a, a spiel starting this uh, Thursday, Emily and I uh, in Camville. So uh, not a lot of rest, but you know, uh, it's always nice to play curling. We signed up for it. Uh, mm -hmm. But yes, we're going to be there in Halifax for sure. <laughs> And Felix, quickly, your season's been amazing so far. You've had some early successes. How does that inspire you as you try to represent Quebec at the Briar again? Yeah, like we've, I mean, it's been since we formed this team of four guys from, from my men's team, we've been doing well. And we're not the team that plays the most. We're not the team that's chasing points, chasing slams, chasing this and that. But we did have good results and some fairly big events. And we're trending pretty well, I would say. We're happy with our play, but we still need to, you know, work hard. And the goal is always, always the tankard in January. You know, that's what hit or makes or breaks a season, really, um, is, is the month of January for us. And we, we're gearing for it from here, especially now that the mixed thing is over. We can move on sort of thing and really focus hard on that. But at the same time, you know, Laurie and I play mixed doubles. We have to put a lot of work into that too. So although my men's team doesn't play, you know, as much as most of the other men's team, if I look at my schedule or Laurie's schedule and our schedule together, it's a pretty big mess. We're just about always curly, <laughs> but you know, we love it. So it's okay. But remind me, did you not beat Bruce Mullet, the world champion? Yeah, we... <laughs> We did that. Um, you can brag about although, that. although he kicked our ass the previous night, so you know, <laughs> that, I guess we we won't we, we don't need to talk about that on this show. <laughs> we, don't what happened, we don't even know what happened the night before last. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was you know like a world class team. So for us to get a win against what I think was the highest ranked team at the time, uh -huh. I'm not sure if it wasn't the first time we did that. But um, yeah, it was it was it was a fun game to play. There was a lot of emotions into that one game. I mean, as much as it was like the quarterfinal, and then we ran out of gas against another Scottish team after. But you know, yeah, playing Bruce and uh, winning against the, the the Scottish curling team was was great. Yeah. 
Awesome. You, you, you two are so excited. You two are so exciting for the game. And we love the passion and energy as, as we wind down here. And we're going to get to Laura Walker, who's now on the board of governors with Curling Canada. Felix, uh, I know you're never shying away from your feelings about the state of the game and, and things. And I imagine Lori hears a lot about that. So I wonder as, as, as we wind down with you two, What's on your heart these days about where the game is at and, and where you see it going and how we can infuse some excitement into our young curlers and our sport in this country, Felix? Oh, that's such a loaded and great question. Um, I guess not everybody has the same answer to that, but to me, there's there's a bit of lack in like to like the tier two, the junior curling right now. I mean, it's so all focused on the, the, the pro players, if you want to say. I know they won't say they're pros, but they are. But uh, I think that if you look at the, like the, the Grand Slam that happened last week, there's so little coverage of the Tier 2. And I'm pretty sure those teams playing in that Tier 2 are, are still giving such a great show. I mean, it's just not the main events, but they're still trying so hard, practicing so hard. You know, they're juggling with their regular life job and school and this and that. So I think if we could probably focus more on than the top 15 in the world, it could be, you know, like you could grow curling that way as much, as, you know, as much as it always boils down to the best teams, which is okay. I get it. It's TV, you know, they go by numbers and stuff like that. But if we could ever just focus more on the next generation of curlers, I think it'd be great and it would help. Absolutely. They widen the tent, right? And and the number of people, you know, I live at a curling club, basically, and the number of people who say they're really bored by the Grand Slam and seeing the same players, and they're great, but it's the same field over and over again, the same style of play, and you just need some, and we got to protect the under 30 crowd, man, or under 35. We got to really build on that. But we've, I've been on that soapbox for a while, haven't I, Devin? I, I probably hear as much from Colleen as uh, Lori hears from Felix. So we're all in it, we're, we're all in it together. But listen, congratulations to you both. It's so wonderful for you to take the time. I know you traveled and the time zones and everything like that. You're probably out of whack. But it's important that we hear from you because you're something we're celebrating. So thank you both. Thank you so much to you for having us. Uh, have you. Thanks. Thanks. Um, Thank you, too. Thank you. Bonne nuit. Merci beaucoup. Okay. It is a recurring theme, though, about next generation and how do you build it and how do you make sure they get their due and their training and maybe cash. You know, it's big questions. Sounds like a great, wonderful segue and big question for the new member of the Board of Governors for Curling Canada. We should uh, now bow uh, because her royalty, Laura Walker, is here. <laughs> no, you should not. Wait, thank you for having me. And I will apologize in advance. I hear a crying baby outside my door. We want the baby. Where We bring you on the show for the cute kids. No, I, If he stops crying, I'll go get him. Otherwise, I'll leave him with Jeff. Okay. Jeff, you're on it. Congratulations, yeah. by the way. Thank you. And all the mixed doubles. You guys are just rocking it. Yeah, we have had a pretty good start to the season. We're playing again uh, this coming weekend in Moostra in the next Super Series. So hopefully we can have a good showing there and just continue on the road that we're on. How do you become a member of the Board of Governors with Curling Canada, Laura? And why was it important that you do this? That is a great question. Um, and it started almost two years ago. I, I will give a lot of cre credit to Catherine Henderson, the past CEO of Curling Canada, um, she spearheaded um, an athletes council that um, kind of allowed us to have a little bit more um, of a voice and also a little bit more of an sort of like an in to the conversations that were going on um, within Curling Canada so that uh, there was a little bit more of a connection between the governing body and the athletes, which I think um, you, most athletes would probably say is something that we felt has been missing um, in the past. So through this athletes council, 
um, this idea of getting an athlete on the board of governors uh, came about. It's actually going to be mandated by Sport Canada uh, come spring of 2025. Um, but, you know, proud of, of Curling Canada for getting ahead of that. And um, I went to Toronto in May to present to the board and basically ask for athlete involvement at the board level. Um, and the board was extremely receptive. I, it was um, really great to meet everyone and, and you know, sit in on a, a board meeting, which is something that us athletes don't really, you know, we don't really see the, the governance side of things. Um, so just kind of over the last few months since that meeting, we've been trying to actually make it work. I've been learning that there are bylaws and there are this and there are that, that all have to happen for someone to get on a board of governors. And um, they approved the, uh, the, the vote was passed for an athlete to sit on the board and, uh, I, through the Athletes Council that ended up being me. So here we are. Long story, long. <laughs> now, and what is your mission? Like, how will you deem your role as a success if you could accomplish or drive something forward that you're passionate about? I, I don't actually even think it's any one thing that um, I or, or the athletes are looking to do. I think it's just building um, and maybe rebuilding kind of a level of trust and a level of mutual understanding um, that may have been lost. I think that we as the athletes sometimes get blinders on like, why are we doing it this way? We all want it this way. I don't understand when there really is a, a reason at the government governance level that that thing can't happen and vice versa, where um, there might not be an active player sitting on the boards. So they don't really have kind of that insight into our daily lives and what affects us and what we're looking for. So I think the biggest goal is just kind of bringing everyone together um, and and giving a voice to the athletes that we may not have had uh, before, but also helping, you know, everyone see everyone's side of things. Because I think there have been examples in the past where that hasn't been the case, where if that athlete voice would have been present, maybe a different outcome would have played out. Um, Laura, Colleen and I were talking about the rigorous schedule of full-time pro curlers, you're now into the second season of taking a step back from the four-person game. How are you feeling, mind, body, soul, um, in being able to show up at the rink rejuvenated and ready to compete your best? Although, for the record, it looked like she was four-person curling a whole lot last year. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, caveat, but... Yes, that is what I was this last year. I intended to take a step back and... Um, I, I loved every minute of playing with Team Laws. It was an awesome experience for me, and I really loved those girls and was happy uh, to help. But it turned into a, a much busier year than I had expected. <laughs> um, so this year, I'm, I'm really sticking to my guns and trying my best, um, you know, to say no, even if there are sparing opportunities. Like I am, I'm all in on Kirk and I. I'm all in on mixed doubles, especially with the trials being moved up, um, you know, a full year earlier it's just over a year away. So I would really like to kind of at this point, put my, all of my folks into that. And it's been, you know, I can go to the rink and I know exactly what I need to work on. I know the shots I'm going to be throwing. Um, I know that I never throw at a broom, for example, like there are all of these little things that I can really put my focus into. Um, and then I really, I truly do feel ready when I, I get to the rink for, for my competitions. And that is, um, a hard feeling to have when you're playing both at that kind of level, even just playing one at that level with how busy we are. Hmm. The four person versus mixed doubles, which is more challenging. I mean, mixed doubles just seems like it, to play it a couple of times. It's so hard, like one miss and you're, you're, you're digging. Right. But whereas the four person, there seems to be a little flexibility in some of those misses. You don't pay as much, but which for you is harder of the disciplines? That's a great question. Um, I think that they are hard in different ways. Um, like you said, with mixed doubles, one miss and and now you're scrambling, but this kind of same thing goes the other way. You can get down a few in a game and one miss from the other team and now you're right back in it. Um, I find like very interesting things hard about mixed doubles. Like for example, I throw the first rock of the end and the last rock of the end. Um, most people throw either early in the end or late in the end kind of thing. So the paths are different, everything's different. So there are just kind of like these little nuances that are, are different. Um, I think some people would find it more difficult just having one person on the sheet with you because it's harder to figure out what the paths are doing, what the ice is doing. I kind of find that easier be because of my partner and the communication style that we have. Um, we really dig deep to figure it out because there's just the two of us out there. Um, but I think that that's something that makes mixed doubles harder for a lot of people. But different in, in their own ways. I love the challenge of mixed doubles currently is what I will say. 
Nice. Well, you're so dark. You guys are an amazing team. Okay, any baby sight at all? Like, how's it? Hey, Ty. I'm just going to bring you with me. Everyone can see the disaster that is the Walker household. We might, we might even get a Jeff sighting in oh, here. Oh, you will. Look there at is. this. There's That's a oh, my gosh. How adorable. Hey, guys. They're like, Liam's like, what's going on? It's dinner time, all right. Yeah. This, here, here's the here's the boys. There you go. You got your sighting. Even the cat, you got everyone. Too cute. We got the whole family. Yeah. This is what yeah. we live for on this show. We do well, <laughs> like to go live. Just so that, say yeah. thanks for having us. Bye. Oh, so bye bye. Enjoy dinner, guys. Yeah. Nice to see you, Jeff. Nice to see you, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> bye. Okay. Bye, thank you. On the new position too, Laura. That's awesome. My God, it's a great position, and I think there's a lot of hope that while well, they talked about rebuilding the trust, I think a lot of curlers are hoping for a greater input into the scheduling and when rule changes come about and things like that. Which is why they performed. You know, we had Emma Miskew on the show last year about the new right. And I'll, I'll be frank with you, Call. I, I'm excited about the direction curling and curling Canada is headed. I think we're seeing some tangible change. Athlete voice, um, consideration of things that I think haven't been overly considered in the past. And, and, and I'm optimistic. There was a lot of conversation uh, at the Canadian Sports Hall of Fame Awards. I had a wonderful chat. Let me just say with Dave Nettowin and Al Hackner, like talk about just a wonderful conversation and stories. Mm -hmm. um, and I also got a chance to sit down with the Furby four um, and, and producer. So put a beautiful cut together of some of that conversation, but can you share one story that can come off the road and into the show call because that was when world championships uh, men and women played together so you were winning and they were winning and you were on the road every year to me it was the glory days actually of the world championships that you got to play with the team canada men and they were so inviting welcome open sharing information with us um randy almost acted like a little bit of a coach you know and he's very sensible in his approach great sense of humor, just unbelievably bringing us into their tent in a way that often when you're an East Coast team, you don't get that same sort of invite into the world. They were just, they were just the best foursome to be able to travel with, plus their wives. I mean, we, of course, we love their wives better. Heather Nettowin was the most epic of um, everybody. <laughs> but anyhow, it was just, they were just so marvelous and such it's the so well deserved that they're into the hall of fame they they wrote some records that and their their quality of play was just always so great they're fabulous people they're fabulous so it was a joy to be able to play with them they are a joy no doubt so we're going to watch that in a second but we should mention that curling fans should prepare for another international event the pan continental championship that begins this sunday in Kelowna. don't uh, ask that question well i have a question do you remember who won last year i don't really think <laughs> So there are some of the rules, 14 women's teams, 16 men's teams. They're divided into A and B divisions. Uh, Canada is going to need a top six finish on the men's side to book a ticket to men's worlds. Canada as hosts, Sydney, Nova Scotia worlds, uh, already in. But Anderson and Guju back for Canada last year. Uh, and there are the teams. Again, that all starts Sunday and wraps up November 4th. Just kind of scary. I mean, you know, I would have thought this would be an arena. This is just like the Europeans in determining who goes to the worlds. It's a, it's a, it's a great, it's a pretty great field when you look at it. Um, and so the idea that it's in a curling club kind of scares me. But Guju won the men's. I did know that. I had Carrie as winning the women's. I was wrong on that. Japan last year. Yeah, Kerry won Pan Continental Bronze and World Championship Bronze. So uh, she would love to mirror gold, gold this year, I'm sure. Because well, she, most importantly, they just want to qualify for the Worlds, right? Exactly. That's an important job. 
All right. Uh, that's a wrap. We're going to leave you with this interview call. Wonderful. Yeah. Always good to see you. Uh, and all of you curling fans. So here's Randy Furby, Dave Nettowin, Scott Pfeiffer, Marcel Rock, who got emotional. Ooh. Watch for that. Uh, now in Canada Sports Hall of Fame. Because I, th I, th I think we play this game because we love the game. It, it's got nothing to do with with getting in the hall or achievements, you know, like, like we all started out because as young kids loving the game and then it just transgressed to a, to a higher level. And, you know, there, there's nothing more important than us getting in the hall together, together, you know, than individuals. So it's, it's very important because because this team was very, very special. And I'm th absolutely thrilled that we are going to this together. Well, I, I mean, for me, I think it was that we just, we epitomized the team concept. I mean, it wasn't for amazing curlers. It wasn't for individuals. It was, it was generally a team that, you know, we, we were best friends. We spent obviously a lot of time together. I know every year we spend more nights in a hotel room I did with Scott and Randy did with Marcel than we did with our, our families at home. Um, but we loved it. Like Randy said, it was all about uh, just enjoying our time together. And if, if we weren't having a great time doing it, we wouldn't have we wouldn't have done it for so long, and we couldn't have been successful. But I think for us, it was just uh, you know there was there was no I, there was no individuals, there was no egos. We just did everything for the team, and that's what came first. And we just loved it. We always thought that the skip or whoever threw last rock, they had to be in bed, and not so much us. <laughs> Not so much us. So, you know, if, if no matter how good I played or bad I played, if Dave was playing good or bad, we would win or we would lose. It doesn't, so we we made sure that he was in bed many times. And so the three of us were out at all hours in the morning. He's, 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 getting, his, he's getting his rest and he's uh, getting ready for the game. And wake up in the morning, yeah, what a great sleep we had. We, we, we had tons of stories. And unfortunately, Dave missed them. He missed a lot of them. He missed a lot of the good times. So that, that, that's one of the strikes, I did. And, and and that was over the years. You, you know, it happened quite frequently. And and I think he, I, he agreed with it. He, he says, "Yeah, I got to get some sleep." You know, for you knuckleheads here. <laughs> there was a uh, when we won our first provincial championship. The first thing Randy did is he sat us all down together, and and I, I remember this like it was yesterday. And he's like, "There's one rule I have, and the one rule is we go to the patch every single night. I don't care what time we finish." or what time we play the next day. And he goes, I don't care if you drink water all night, you don't have to have a drink, you can't have one, whatever you want, we go to the patch every single night because the reason that we're playing in those venues is because those fans are there to see us. And we make an appearance and we sit down and we talk to people. And it, I mean, it was that was kind of the way we were. I mean, we just, we made sure that we appreciated the fans. They were, uh, we were very appreciative of the fact that they came to watch us. And we got to play in amazing venues and we played in, you know, the biggest briar that ever ever happened in Edmonton, which was like amazing for us, of course, but we never missed a night of the patch. Now, to Randy's point, a lot of times they would be like, okay, you guys, like, let's go, it's time to go. And we'd all like be heading out the door. And next thing you know, our coach, Brian Moore, is kind of pretending to get in the cab with me. And then he'd quickly shut the door and the cab would take off and they'd all be waving. So they'd send me home. But that we did go every night. I just usually got sent home first. <laughs> Yeah, I think the biggest turning point for us was probably when we went to our first Worlds in 2001 and we had a shot to win the semi-final and uh, we missed it and uh, then didn't win the bronze medal game. So we came home, we were one of the first teams to not come home with a medal and Dave apologized in the dressing room afterwards and we're like, no, no, this is a team, we're going to get you back there again next year and that's what we did. Uh, so it was the motivation to, to get Dave, you know, that another opportunity to get that shot was was something that was motivating for us and, and seeing Marcel cry on the, uh, on the podium in 2002 in, in Bismarck was like wow like we're doing this as a team right and then it just steamrolled and you know you go into 2003 and 2005 being in a hometown Briar in Edmonton uh, there was always that one extra thing that we hadn't accomplished that we we really wanted to do um, it was obviously with all the, the tough teams out there it was pretty difficult to, to keep that up over the entire over the entire period as a team, but I'm pretty proud of the accomplishments and what we did for each other back then. Marcel, you're emotional. Yeah. Tell me about that. <laughs> it's like we're on the podium again, right, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, 
I said I wasn't going to do this. I said I wasn't going to do this. He told Furby he wasn't going to do this. <laughs> no, it's just, you know, it brings you back to, Scotty even said, like, when I put on the Alberta jersey, it was wild. And he said, wait till we put on the Maple Leaf. And then, for me, the emotion is, as a kid, you grow up and all you want is that. And then it was there. So it's a lifelong journey. Sorry, I'm emotional. I don't know. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> I mean, so good. Isn't isn't that beautiful? I mean, it to is see, to see what it meant to them, and to see they look fantastic, and to see them all together. Call it was I I was teary eyed with them. Also, it makes you nostalgic for when teams stayed together. Yes. The brothers. And what Randy said about the patch, because we've been to the Briar, we know about the patch. We know about the decreasing number of fans mm. coming to live events like a Briar or the Grand Slams, for example. But that they knew they needed to show up to the patch for the fans and to be with the fans. And if the fans were going to come, they were going to honor them too. Beautiful. That is missing in the game right now today. You know, yes, they sign a few autographs. Yes, they're very good about taking pictures. That takes 15 minutes. Going and sharing a beer with somebody takes a commitment and this realization that the fan, we, we, we think the players are the most important. You don't have a sport without fans and those fans are raining out. Um, so that was beautiful to hear too. It was fantastic. Um, that wow. interview was about 20 minutes. We'll actually be posting the full interview on CBC Sports YouTube so you can watch that because it Great was Great guys. Oh, that was so well deserved that they got into the hall. Uh, Call, you're getting ready also. We're going to be back with that curling show early uh, November, but you're also getting ready for a national, <laughs> another national championship. Current Saskatchewan, so I'm glad. Uh, Felix and Lori have decided to that they didn't have time to play in that event because uh, I we I last won with the skip I'm going with the great Paul Fleming in 1999 the last century. Let's see if this old gal still can throw a few rocks at house. Well, I think you'll be more than okay, and you're going to be there with your son Luke. Oh, and, Luke. I mean, can you imagine? Hey, Marley, little Luke is getting married. Yeah, I'm just breaking it. What? Here. I am. I didn't tell you. He gave the girl that throws rocks a big old rock. I know. Talk about it. I saved the best for last, didn't I? Colleen Jones Gossip. Well, we have to talk after the show because how could you not tell me that? We were talking about so many other things that I forgot. I, I have a long list. Okay, we'll talk later. Listen, it was so good to be back live. Congratulations, um, we are back November 6th, Monday, November 6th. Um, I believe that's the correct date, whatever yeah. Monday that is. And you're going to be in Swift Current. I'm going to be somewhere, but we're going to be with all of you curling fans. It's so lovely to be back. I could be anywhere. Probably. I'll be in Saskatchewan. Who doesn't love curling in Saskatchewan more than me? Love it. Glad to do it one more time. Speedy Creek. Uh, you'll be great. Uh, I'm calling you right after we're done. Uh, take care, curling fans. Curling now enters the sports weekend spotlight. 1963, when they took the briar to Brandon. Hi, everybody. I'm Don Whitman with Don Duga, two-time world champion.